Welcome to the fascinating world of traffic signals. In this video, we're going to go over how vehicles are seen by traffic lights so that they know to go from red to green. And we're going to do that by going over three different types of detections. We're going to go over inductive loops, video cameras, and best for last and my favorite radars let's get right into it here at this intersection we are utilizing inductive loops and an inductive loop is a copper cable that is coiled up inside of the asphalt and it's tied back to an amplifier there at the traffic signal controller cabinet and that amplifier then creates an electromagnetic field and when that electromagnetic field is disrupted by the metal on your vehicle it then detects the presence of your vehicle letting these traffic lights know to go from red to green so that you can efficiently travel across this intersection. Let's go ahead and open up this traffic signal controller cabinet where I can show you exactly how those inductive loops help you get a green light at these traffic lights. And inside of this traffic signal controller cabinet, we have a card rack. And in this card rack is those amplifiers I was talking about. And those amplifiers are creating an electric magnetic field with those coils in the asphalt that are picking up your vehicle's metal. So as you can see, these vehicles in this left turn, that is approach phase one. And you can see how it is picking up the disruption in the electromagnetic field, which is then putting in a call to this traffic signal controller cabinet which will then allow them to get a green light here at this traffic light. As you can see with the N over it, it is going to be going to phase one and phase five next, which is the left turn lanes, and they are now free to clear through this intersection. So let's go ahead and go over the pros and cons of inductive loops. The pros, they're super cheap and they're super resilient. I mean, there's no kind of weather conditions that impact the results of inductive loops. But let's talk about the cons. So if you've ever ridden a motorcycle at a red light before, you would absolutely notice that you have a harder time getting a green light. And that's typically due to inductive loops not picking up enough metal for you to get a green light. Another con to these inductive loops is the asphalt conditions. You see asphalt at traffic lights does not tend to hold up as well as asphalt on highways and interstates as there's a lot of 18-wheeler traffic that is breaking at the intersection and these loops are cut right there at the stop bar, which can then damage the inductive loop, which would give false calls. And that's why you would get a green light on a side street at the middle of the night when nobody else is there. It's because of a broken inductive loop. Other cons, it also requires underground work and a lot more traffic control to reinstall these loops. So it's harder to maintain, harder to recut, harder to work on, versus a camera that's up on a mast arm where you never need to change it back out or a radar that's above the asphalt as well. So because of these reasons, a lot of places are now going to something like a camera, radars, or LIDAR. So let's go take a look at those forms of detection. So with the cons of inductive loops being where you got to change them out every time the asphalt needs to be changed at the intersection, places are starting to upgrade more to cameras or radars and at this intersection we have cameras which you no longer have to change out every time the asphalt gets milled and overlaid and repaired as you can make any kind of changes with these detection types so let's take a look at this intersection and let me show you how these cameras are used to help you have a safe commute so let's go ahead and open up this traffic signal controller cabinet at the intersection that is utilizing cameras at the vehicle detection and let me show you just how they work all right now that we have the cabinet open i can show you how the cameras are working so these vehicles here that are sitting on this approach which is going to be phase four it, they are getting detected by that camera and this ccu is going to recognize that and it's going to put in a call into the traffic signal controller cabinet and you can see they have a call for phase four which is the straight or left hand turn approach on this intersection and they will soon get a green light so as you can see the timer is starting to count down here on this controller the next is coming up on the phase four approach and they are now getting served a green light and these people will be free to clear once they have the safe 
left turn to do so at this intersection. There is a con to the inductive loop where it has a hard time picking up motorcycles and other vehicles like that. As you can see here, we have a golf cart which is being picked up just fine by that camera in front of it, which is locking in a call for them on the proper approach for them to get a green light here at this traffic light. That's not just it for these cameras. You see, they can be used for more than just the stop bar detection. They can also be used for advanced detection. Certain cameras out here, and I'll screenshot one that's right in front of you. It is a multi-sensor. It's going to have a camera which is gonna be used to pick up these left turn lanes and the presence detection. And they also have a radar on them, which is going to be used to pick up advanced traffic, meaning traffic that's five, 600 feet down the road is going to pick up these vehicles. And let me show you an example of that. So this alt sensor here is that radar. And every time it blips, it is picking up these vehicles that are traveling to this intersection. And that is going to have dilemma zones drawn in with them. So as these vehicles are coming to the intersection, it's gonna recognize the speed limit they are doing and it will extend that green light so that they can safely go across the intersection and not have to be worried about getting rear-ended if they gotta slam on their brakes or even T-boned by a vehicle here. So it is making you have a safer daily commute when these traffic lights are utilizing cameras and even camera radar combos. All right, so let's go over the pros and cons of cameras at a traffic light. So the pros are they are extremely innovative. You no longer have to worry about road work or construction affecting the traffic lights. Once the camera's in place and those zones are drawn in, we can even move those zones in case there is road work that changes up things temporarily or permanent. Say they wanna widen the road, we can just extend out those zones and we don't have to replace the detection here at this intersection. These cameras also allow for more types of vehicles. Like you saw that golf cart and motorcycles are less likely to have issues at traffic lights when the traffic lights are using cameras for detection. But the main cons of cameras are going to be weather and sun glare, especially. Rain can put in false calls, fog, snow, any type of weather conditions can kind of start putting in false calls and really shows the negative sides of these cameras. Those that are facing east and west, east in the morning, west at night, or sunset time, they typically have an issue and will have false calls for the first half hour or so at each of these intersections. So for that reason, I'm gonna show you my personal favorite type of detection, which is gonna be radars and not the multi-sensors here that are is a camera radar combo, but radars that are used for presence detection and advanced, advanced detection. So let's go take a look at those. And last but surely not least, this intersection here is using radars for vehicle detection. And these radars specifically are from Wavetronics. And each one of these types of detections we've gone over in this video, I have installed hundreds, if not thousands of units, loops, cameras. And I'm saying right here, these radars are my favorite for installation, low troubleshooting. And the only thing I've ever seen them have issues with is really dense fog. So they work great in just about all weather conditions. And let's go over how they work and why they are here to help you have a safe and more efficient daily commute. Let's go ahead and open up this traffic signal controller cabinet so I can show you exactly how these radars work. Now, similar to that iTerris CCU with all the cameras, this device is going to connect to all the radars in the field, and then it's going to, going to connect to this traffic signal controller, which will then output your vehicle presence and here at this intersection, they also have advanced radars out there. I'll get you a close up look on that. That can pick up up to 800 feet away from the unit itself, as well as the matrix ones that are set up on poles that are being used for stop bar detection. But we can kind of look at this diagram of the intersection. You can see the arrow going north, which is also this direction and you can see the approaches and the phases here. So you got two and five here, left turn lanes are phase five, 
six and one over here going southbound one is a left turn to that and then you got phase three that would be going west and four that is going to be going east so as your vehicle approaches the stop bar that radar is going to pick them up let me show you that into phase four the eastbound traffic sensor set up and then we can watch the verification so as you can see we have zones drawn out in those lanes and that is that white car and that pickup truck and it is picking up multiple vehicles right there at the stop bar which is then putting in a call at this traffic signal controller and it is going to then allow phase four and really all of the the approaches here at this intersection since it's a pretty busy intersection it's going to allow all of them to go green in order from the phases two and six which are the main roads here on 49 and then go to three four back to one and five it's actually a lead lag out here that's for a different video but that is pretty much how these radars work and that is how they detect vehicle presence so we've gone over the stop bar detection units that are picking up side streets left turn lanes and making sure they get a green light let's talk about the advanced detection and it does just about the same as that iteris multi-sensor with the radar there it's going to pick up traffic 600 to 800 feet back the controller how fast some of these vehicles are going and it, whether it needs to extend that green light to allow them to proceed without being rear-ended or they even have a dare a dynamic all red extension that is used with these radars as well so that if they know somebody is not going to make it through the red light it will extend that red light making sure they clear through the intersection and they'll hopefully get pulled over by a police officer and get a ticket for running a red light but it will ensure that they do not get t-boned at an intersection which makes this a lot more of a safer environment for all the drivers so you spend a little more money you get more safety and you get a better intersection so let's go over the pros and cons of using radars specifically the wavetronics ones at traffic lights well, the pros, the same as cameras, once you install them, you really don't need to move them. You can come back later and adjust the zones. And so like road work and construction really won't affect them or impact them. You don't have to recut it every time the asphalt gets redone because they are sensors mounted higher up and aerial. These are super reliable and super durable. I've seen one fall 40 feet. I've seen one get hit by a dump truck slap it back up and they still worked big one for me is we get a lot less complaints out of these radars as they are great on picking up motorcycles or any types of vehicles in almost all weather conditions besides just when it's real dense fog real dense rain you'll have those issues with most detection systems that are mounted up in the air but you see a lot less issues out of these radars than you would let's say cameras now the cons of these radars. These radars are probably the most expensive detection system that you can go with in this industry. They are very expensive compared to most other detection types. Even an intersection with cameras, you can really cut down the cost. While these Wavetronics radars, they, they just aren't there with the price point that you're finding other systems. But this is a system you slap up there and for the next decade you should be good to go next cons like we mentioned really dense fog it really just sucks with any kind of detection system that's up on poles and looking for vehicle presence they typically will have an issue in certain weather conditions this one's dense fog but every elsewhere sun glare uh rain anything like that really doesn't affect these radars other con is it takes multiple units it takes multiple units for the advances it takes all the units it's pretty much going to be four for the stop bar two for the advances there's no kind of multi-sensor with these radars which is a negative because that means there is more time that you got to spend setting up a truck in different positions while installing these and also well while maintaining these items you have to get into the road and have a bucket truck 
to actually get up there and mess with the radar sensors themselves. So let's go over all these detection systems one more time. Inductive loops, it's a great low cost up front, super durable. The resilience that they have is almost unmatched by any other detection system. As I've said before, anytime there's any kind of construction at the intersection, near the intersection, if they mill the asphalt, you lose the inductive loops, meaning they are not reusable like the other systems like cameras and radars where you slap them up one time and you pay for that up front, but you don't have to pay for it in the long run. Inductive loops, you do have to pay for it in the long run while it also has a harder time picking up small vehicles and motorcycles. Cameras are a great low cost option up front, especially if you're looking at just stop bar detection, you can get a system fairly inexpensive and works great, but it has the negatives of sun glare and weather conditions that cause them to have false calls, ghost calls, whatever you wanna call them, 3 a.m., no vehicle present on the side streets, but you're getting held up at a red light. They tend to have more issues like that, depending on the weather conditions, and especially with the sun glare. Last but not least, obviously the radars, these ones specifically by Wavetronics. It's a high cost up front, but it's a system that's supposed to last for decades and have the lowest amount of complaints in my experience down here and really throughout the state of Mississippi. We don't have a lot of complaints with radars, but you do got to set up multiple areas. If you want a full intersection, it's six different units. Each unit is around $7,000 a piece. It adds up quick and they are a very expensive product, but they work great and for the long run, you should see your money's worth out of them. Now in the future, we will also look at single device detection systems, Curex, Grid Smart, even Wavetronics is coming out with their devices where it only takes one unit, so easy to maintain, a little bit more affordable up front, and you use one unit, one radar, or one fish eye lens camera, or a PTZ to detect all of the approaches at an intersection. In a future video, we will go over those devices. So y'all make sure to subscribe, make sure to like the video, and comment down below if you got any questions pertaining to these devices or any traffic signal related comments, questions, or concerns. Thanks for watching.